Now let us discuss certain specific issues in exhaustion relating to self replicating technologies. Now self replicating technologies are those technologies wherein by virtue of the nature of technology itself it makes copies. So if I were to buy a self replicating technology and without my active involvement if there is any kind of uh, replication would I be entitled to those copies or that, that arrive out of such self replicating technologies is an important question. In Bauman versus Monsanto uh, decision of the Supreme Court of United States the US Supreme Court came to a conclusion that in relation to self replicating technologies the regime of exhaustion that is followed would, would, would be the first sale doctrine however it applies only to the exact copy that was purchased from the buyer. Now Bauman's argument was that since the technology is self replicating uh, he should be allowed to save and resow the seeds and uh, resell them uh, by virtue of uh, the first sale that occurred in relation to the original product that was purchased from Monsanto. So by virtue of uh, this decision the US Supreme Court came to a conclusion that if Bauman's argument in relation to first sale doctrine was, was adopted then uh, in, in self replicating technologies uh, the IP owner the patent owner could never exercise effective control on further sales in relation to self replicating technology and it would directly compete with, with his, his market and monopoly. So the Supreme Court of United States clearly said that although first sale doctrine applies in relation to patents it is limited to the exact first copy that was sold to Bauman and not to uh, you know uh, outcomes and produces in relation to self replicating technology. In this case Bauman was replanting Monsanto's uh, genetically modified uh, plant varieties and by virtue of uh, uh, these plants being self replicating he was using those seeds to resow them every year and was making profits out of it and the Supreme Court struck down uh, uh, you know Bauman's claims in relation to first sale doctrine uh, by, by limiting the scope of, uh, of first sale as being applied to only that particular product which was sold to him and not further uh, copies of the product. Second is the issue of exhaustion of copyright in relation to products that are ancillary but do not directly infringe copyright. Now in situations where uh, suppose if uh, the patent law allows international exhaustion the trademark law allows international exhaustion it is important because uh, in India uh, since by virtue of court decisions national exhaustion is largely followed by, 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 uh, by most courts uh, it, it would be important to consider whether importation of products uh, and ancillary infringement of copyright would be exempted. Now in a situation where if you import uh, a patented product or a trademark product and if international law exhaustion doctrine is applied it will still be an infringement of copyright if there is valid copyright in labels and uh, in valid copyright involving artistic works. Now to avoid this situation in 2012 when the law was amended uh, the, the legislature clearly included a provision called 51 ZC which, in, which mentions that the importation of copies of any literary or artistic works such as labels, company logos or promotional or explanatory material that is purely incidental to other goods or products being imported lawfully this shall not amount to an infringement. Now by virtue of this provision if anybody you were to import a kind of material uh, that would in ancillary involve violation of copyright it would not amount to copyright if it is otherwise valid under law to be imported. Now this section is very unique that because although national exhaustion regime does not uh, apply in relation to copyright law uh, we have tried to create a minimum uh, kind of uh, small limitation in relation to a purely incidental infringement involving copyright. In summary we may conclude that the property law principles do not allow to impose an absolute condition on sale which defeats the purpose of uh, deriving value from the property and hence uh, any, vend any vendor cannot impose a condition which states that the buyer of the property cannot further sell it. This condition has been extended to intellectual property by way of the first sale doctrine which means that a buyer of an IP protected product can further sell the same physical copy of the product and not make multiple copies however the first sale doctrine is going to help only with reference to the exact product and not uh, the technologies that are reproduced. Furthermore uh, if there are certain exceptions in relation to both cinematographic films and sound recordings 
and also computer programs that are envisaged both in the TRIPS agreement and also in the domestic laws where uh, you know the, the basic idea is that in relation to these uh, works there is no exhaustion or first sale in, its, in itself. We, we also discussed uh, the principles involving national exhaustion and international exhaustion wherein we have uh, uh, discussed the nuances of what it means to have national exhaustion where parallel imports are not allowed and what it means to have international exhaustions, uh, exhaustion where parallel imports are allowed in various kinds of intellectual property protected works. However, regional exhaustion is an extension to national exhaustion. We also discussed the arguments for and against uh, uh, international exhaustion. Primarily the arguments have been relating to uh, you know, the fact that international exhaustion may discourage IP owners from price discrimination and uh, it is uh, also important to uh, understand that uh, 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 price discrimination uh, if not followed uh, would, uh, would, would lead to consequences on consumers. So that has been the argument that, uh, that IP owners have upheld. But we have seen that in relation to a uh, large majority of IP protected products, uh, in, in certain cases price discrimination may not be followed and that is where exhaustion, national, international exhaustion can be quite useful. In relation to TRIPS, we noticed that Article 6 of the TRIPS agreement does not lay down any kind of principle or definition of exhaustion. Hence, member countries are free to deter determine any regime of exhaustion provided it is consistent with other provisions of the TRIPS agreement and provided you comply with section uh, Article 3 that is national treatment and Article 4 that is MFN, uh, most favored nation treatment in relation to the TRIPS agreement. In, in relation to exhaustion of patent rights in India, we, we notice that section 107 clause uh, A, B uh, uh, precisely uh, does not clearly lay down any particular regime of exhaustion, but if you look into the statement of objectives and reasons and the amendments that were done um, in relation to clarifying the meaning of exhaustion, it leads to a kind of conclusion that the exhaustion regime that is adopted in relation to patent law is international exhaustion. Of, however, there is a lot to be expected from uh, the, 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 uh, the, the type of clarity that is needed in uh, uh, relation to this particular phrase um, imported from, uh, uh, from duly authorized by law from some other country that needs to be clarified. In relation to copyrights in India, it is very clear from the court decisions that court decisions mostly have favored national exhaustion. We also uh, discussed some offbeat decisions where uh, you know uh, parallel exportation has also been prohibited under Indian law, which is kind of per incurium. Uh, we, uh, we in relation to trademark law, we look into the division bench uh, or decision in Samsung and we have come to a conclusion that uh, you know uh, the principles of international exhaustion are clearly laid down in trademark law, however this decision has been challenged in the Supreme Court. In specific issues relating to exhaustion, we discussed the Bauman versus Monsanto decision, wherein the Supreme Court of United States has come to a conclusion that in relation to self-replicating technologies, uh, you know, the self-replicating technologies have an inherent ability to replicate and in such situation, there is, uh, uh, you know, in relation to such additional copies or the self-replicated ones, there is no exhaustion as such. So the exhaustion in, uh, applies essentially to the first copy and not to further replicated uh, copies. Uh, in relation to copyright uh, of, uh, of uh, copyright infringement of products that are imported and uh, ancillary infringement, uh, we, we, we know that the recent 2012 amendment has included a provision in relation to fair dealing in the section 52, which allows that uh, you know any kind of infringement uh, as, as uh, an ancillary to a product being imported, a copyright infringement in relation to a product being imported is not considered as infringement within the copyright law. So, in summary, we can come to a conclusion that uh, although uh, there has been an attempt by intellectual property owners to kind of uh, uh, argue and articulate a premise for international exhaustion, countries all around the world are moving towards, uh, uh, sorry, in, in summary, we can conclude that uh, although IP owners have been demanding national exhaustion largely, courts have uh, uh, all across the world have denied and have interpreted, sought to interpret international exhaustion as the underlying principle more in align with the objectives of free trade and uh, in the welfare of consumers. Thank you one and all.